it's too simple. Uh, but yeah, I got to go get my gift, by the way. Uh, 735. We, we, we've always made sure that we that we set like a price limit. I mean, not because we're cheap. It's only because, you know, like somebody will be like, hey, we're Chris. We're cheap. We're cheap. It's like, hey, Chris, I got you this pen. You're like, oh, thanks a lot. I got you a Tesla. <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Ain't nobody getting a Tesla. Let me just <laughs> let me just set the bar right there, bro. Nobody getting a Tesla. Trust me. Uh, 735, Senator Tello Tidegui. Yeah, Senator, so let me tell you my, let me gripe about my FOIA. First of all, okay. this administration is just nonstop on and on about transparency, transparency, transparency. It's so funny. Because I had the chief of staff for the governor, officer of the governor, uh, John Junior Calvo, on this uh, show. Yeah. Um, was that last oh, year? They're wow, they're coming back. No, no, no. This is a while ago. This is a while ago. <laughs> uh, before the incident. Uh, anyway, I had him on, and uh, I was like, "Hey, so you know, one to ten, like, what would you rate the administration with transparency?" And he was like, "Oh, 10. And I was like, "Huh?" And he was like, "Yeah, ten for sure, for sure." <laughs> um, but anyway, so I sent this FOIA to the Guam Memorial Hospital. And uh, they responded that I had to pay for it, right? Um, but the thing is, I asked for the documents to be sent electronically because I know that they're already in their system electronically, right? And every other government agency always gives it to me electronically. I'll FOIA DOA, and I'm talking like it's a thousand pages, and they don't charge me a red, not nothing, not even a single penny, wow. right? Wow. Um, but GMH, they were a little butthurt about our above step story, so I can understand the motivation. Anyway, they charged me twenty nine bucks for like printing costs, but then when I paid for it, they sent me the documents digitally on email. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't even understand what's the point of me. I mean, I get it, you know, GMH. I'm so glad to support. I put that thirty dollars towards patient services, please. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know. But they could have easily given the documents willingly, as any government agency can give anybody asking uh, for a FOIA request. They can just give them the documents willingly. Yeah, and, and well, good morning to everyone there, the KUM family and to yourself. Thank you for having me on. And, you know, Chris, 30, $30 you paid for the, this FOIA request. I think you should get a tax credit. I mean, this is information that you're entitled to. This is information that your taxpayers, taxpaying money is pay, paying for. Yeah. So I, I, it's really disheartening for them to go ahead and send it to you electronically and not even provide you yeah. the uh, hard copy. You know, it, it's, this is ridiculous. And that's, that's why, Chris, I've invited you to the public hearing on Thursday, along with everyone else out there who, who constantly put out FOIA requests and even having to pay for it in a situation like yourself. Um, not only paying for it, but actually receiving it electronically um, is ridiculous. And this public hearing we're having is, is on Bill 221 that um, requires all agencies autonomous, semi-autonomous to provide this kind of information every month, you know, any kind of new hiring and explanation. Um, right now they do it quarterly uh, based on you know, uh, information that's kind of confusion. Uh, the average person trying to understand it, it's it's not all there, but quarterly is way too long. This is something that we should know um, every month on any new hires, whether it's paid through local funding or, or federal funding. And that's a big deal right now, considering there's this, you know, huge in, in um, implode of funding from the federal government that, uh, even myself, I'm having a hard time figuring out where this money is going to and what's it paying for. Is it paying for a salary? You know, which is very disheartening because we all mentioned, even the legislature and several of us agreed that any kind of federal funding that's going to pay for a salary, well, how is it going to be sustained? You know, after this is over. Well, do if you I'm think not... that do you think that they're just going to end up like we saw this uh, with uh, the Guam EPA announcement that was later uh, retracted was. They were looking specifically for limited term appointments uh, for terms of 18 months, right? That's right. So to me, that really looks like, hey, we'll get you a job, you vote the right way, and then, you know, after we get in uh, and win the election, uh, your limited term will expire, right. but we'll try and get you permanent. You know what I mean? That's really the reality of what's happening. Well, and, and that boils down to this whole FOIA with Guam Memorial Hospital and these hires that are, are – um, Wow, coming in at above step, you know, I mean, you go from one to 10 and they're hiring these individuals at 10. Yeah. Can you imagine, you know, just the morale in the hospital right now? Those who've been working there for years and years, 
especially in, in any kind of technology position that has the experience of working in the hospital and they're bypassed any kind of uh, upgrade or position, uh, a higher position with somebody else coming in because maybe they were politically correct instead of what is, you know, we put together Department of Administration as, as well as civil service, you know, cover these angles on who should be hired and, and do it with merit, based on merit and based not only on experience, but, you know, education, which brings me to, if, if anyone is listening and, and if you look at some of this information um, that's provided in a FOIA, um, you know, on page, there was a section where it talks about qualification mm -hmm. requirements. And in, it has A and B, and it's, B is kind of funny because it, you know, offsets A. Yeah, so we're talking, are you talking about uh, page? Seven. Seven, yeah, so this is uh, an above step uh, 339 that was sent to you. Yeah, so this is 340 pages we got, and this was an above step recruitment for above uh, a data processing supervisor. Right. And uh, so they so lay out the, the qualifications and the qualifications first one listed as three years of specialized experience in right. computer system analysis, programming work, a graduation from a recognized college or university with a bachelor's degree in computer science, business, admin, mathematics or related field or B, or, any equivalent combination of experience and training, which provides a minimum knowledge, abilities and skills. So, yeah, you're right. The second uh, qualification seems to kind of negate the need for the first. Uh, but there was another one in here where, let me try and find this. This was for above step recruitment for standby senator. Um, you know, the ultimate irony to me, though, was uh, paying $30 of my own money to get these yeah. documents to read about how our taxpaying dollars are being abused at the island's only public hospital. To me, that, I mean, making me pay for it <laughs> to read about how <laughs> there's funny business going on, that was just a, a bitter pill uh, to swallow. Well, this is something you're entitled to as a taxpayer <laughs> yeah um but i'm looking for this here so it was an above step recruitment and i think it was for an admin uh position um mm -hmm. hold on i'm almost there no no worries i just you know i I'm, i feel really bad for a lot of those who work at gmh currently right now yeah. and yeah you know for them to speak up at this point it, yeah. it would put them in jeopardy you know it, it's it's not about you know the ability or the merit of an individual who's worked hard in that position so uh, that's who you know and that that needs to stop that really needs to stop it needs to stop it needs we need to have people come up and and be able to speak out and have the courage i mean i'll stand right beside you you know i'll do everything i can to protect you you need to speak up though there was one here uh for a it was a above set recruitment a management analyst two from step one to step 10, okay, <laughs> um, and the justification that was uh, given here was, and this was kind of, I thought it was kind of cute, um, and uh, this lady is actually a GCC Board of Trustee member, uh, Deborah Bellinger, uh, and it writes here, uh, Miss Bellinger is an entrepreneur with many years of management experience and possesses a master's degree in business administration, which will bring much needed talent to GMHA. And its effort mm -hmm. to maintain QAPI and implement management change. And, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, or is this a talent agency or a public hospital where the roof is falling down? Wow. Yeah. I yeah. mean, what are we trying to recruit talent for? And then I want to go, I want to really kind of go into this because that release from GMH, I mean, I was on leave and I was offended by it and I wanted to come in. Um, I mean, I told Bria, I was like, put me on the Zoom. But to me, the, the ultimate irony of that release that GMH came out with was that it was written by their PIO, uh, May Habib, who was recruited above step twice this year. Twice, not just once. Yeah. I mean, I could maybe understand their argument that, oh, okay, we need a PIO to get information out. Um, mm -hmm. And that was the second above step recruitment, but she was initially hired above step as a management analyst for. So when they talk about how they use this process to fill these hard to fill positions, that's not exactly what I see when I look at it. I mean, there are some technical um, and, you know, uh, patient care related positions that they did uh, recruit above step, but there's just a lot of ones I feel that are just not justified and have nothing to do with patient care. Right. Well, you know, Jay, um, there is a public hearing, an oversight, oversight hearing, uh, which we sure need more of those. You know, I wish some of these oversight chairs would, would have these, 
hearings well, more it, often. Well, it seems like it's always the speaker who's having one, and, and yeah, uh, Senator and, Perez. And everybody else seems to turn a blind eye, you know, and, you know, the people of Guam have the power to, you know, come forward and, and write to your senators, especially those who have oversight of certain agencies, with these issues that are coming up, that are coming up to light. And, you know, you got to remember that those people who do come forward and mention that they deserve, you know, their time, they deserve your attention. But uh, it's at 3 p.m. today for the oversight. Um, Speaker Chalai is holding it. And this is going to um, give us the opportunity to ask questions about the hiring. But most especially, I want to know about the board of directors over at Guam Memorial Hospital. If they've had the opportunity to scrutinize, you know, these hires and even discuss, you know, the process, establish any kind of hiring process whatsoever for these above step recruitment, you know, we all know, especially when it comes to unclassified positions um, in the government of Guam, that uh, there's there's really no requirement mm -hmm. except you know yeah. if you got in right. Yeah. But these classified positions, like most of these that you brought forward um, and that you received on this FOIA request, clearly show these are some these are classified positions. Well, then what I'm also seeing is they're taking unclassified employees and making them classified with above step yeah. recruitment. And so that, in, in essence, makes these employees permanent. Whereas right. if they were unclassified, then usually they would um, lose their job if like a, a different governor was elected. Well, and that's that's the way they get in. Yeah. yeah. In. <laughs> they no pun intended. <laughs> no no pun intended or really intended. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's... We all know that's how they try and get in. You know, let me get you in as temporary. Maybe those uh, individuals that were hired on a limited term to, for 18 months, you know, we'll, we'll get you in after that. You know, that's their uh, their reward for holding up any kind of signs. <laughs> hmm. But we, we really should um, keep an eye on this. And I have to thank KUAM uh, for doing this, you know, finding information and exposing it um, so the people of Guam can find out what their tax dollars is up to, yeah, you I know, mean, with their, go ahead. It's just frustrating because, um, you know, the, the government of Guam workers, I mean, at the hospital, whether it's nurses or whatever, I mean, they grind it out and they, they play mm -hmm. the game. They're classified. They get 3%. If they get a, a satisfactory or an outstanding review, then they usually get like a three and a half percent, uh, increment right and then here comes this above step issue and when you look at the documents it's like you'll have one gmh employee um mm -hmm. who's hired on above step is like let's say just use the example of the management analyst four and then they're later recruited above step to another position and so it's just like gmh is just feeding on itself you know what i mean rewarding mm -hmm. the favorite employees while everyone else doesn't get the same shot, doesn't have the same opportunity, doesn't get that chance to get, I mean, it's essentially a raise pretty much. You know what I mean? It's just a fancy way of giving someone a big raise. And this release that came out from GMH lambasted KUAM and said, oh, they're the steps and they're not jumping steps when the documents clearly show they are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're hiring this lady at 10 steps above and, as a manager because she's talented. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure our hardworking nurses and medical staff are more talented and right. have to do more with less pay. Right, exactly. You know, and like I said earlier, you know, the morale at GMH, you know, um, I don't I don't know if Lillian can really see what's going on over there at Guam Memorial Hospital. I mean, I'm here, I have a couple of friends who work there and they're very disappointed, ready to get up and pack up and leave all their hard work and enduring and having to deal, like you said, with the falling ceilings, you know, <laughs> literally close to wearing hard hats, going into work and, and you know, dealing with, with just the lack of uh, transparency, you know, is it's ridiculous and it's just disheartening. We're losing people left and right, you know, on this island, you know, whether it's coming from DOE, which there's a big influx of people leaving there who are, because of, what's going on with COVID and those who, who don't want to take the vaccine, you know, for one reason or another, um, their choice, they're leaving Guam. And we're going to have the same situation at GMH that 
GMRC was having. You know, GMRC is a beautiful hospital, has a lot of the equipment that um, uh, Guam Memorial doesn't have, but the problem there is they don't have the staff at uh, GMRC. And Guam Memorial is totally different. They, they have the staff, but they lack the equipment and the infrastructure. You know, now you're gonna start losing those employees over at GM, uh, GMH, Guam Memorial Hospital. So it's just, you know, it's very disheartening and I'm, I'm hoping that everyone tunes in. If you're not able to tune in, uh, you're heading to work and you wanna watch it, but you can't, you can always watch it on YouTube. Yeah, they put on, it on YouTube. Just YouTube and, and make uh, your assessment, you know, and, and after reviewing it, feel free. Feel free to send emails to your senators on your opinion on what should happen. You don't have to leave your name. You can do this in confidence, you know, and I'm pretty sure some of my friends over at GMH is gonna, you know, be sending me some emails like, no, that's not true. You know, whatever Lillian says, I hope, you know, I think she will. The speaker always swears in individuals yeah. before they come into an oversight, you know, swear them in and they're under oath. You know, they, they got to be very careful. And if they don't want to answer the question, be prepared for them to say something like, oh, uh, I don't have that answer right now. I'll get back to you. <laughs> you know, I hear that so one I'm, a lot. I'm really yeah. hoping that uh, <clears throat> the speaker, she does her due diligence like she always does and provides them questions in advance. So we're not going to get any of that cheek back of, oh, uh, I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, nine times out of ten, they usually don't, Chris. Yeah, I know. When we get that in, in session during committee of the whole, and well, oh, we, it, have, we have some comments here, uh, Senator. And, you know, and I want to, I want to, because I feel like the administration of the hospital will try and turn this into a, oh, we're attacking the frontliners, the precious frontliners, and we're not. Okay, mm -hmm. the, yeah, keep kicking ass, frontliners. Who's attacking you guys is your own administration, your own management by allowing all of this above step recruitment. I mean, that's the reality of it. Yeah, um, and, and the thing is the senators, well, at least I know the speaker as an oversight chair and a couple of us have um, been in support of those frontliners and ensure that what they're doing is recognized and not stepped upon, you know, or bypassed by something political I mean, we definitely know the political mumble jumbo that's going on. Um, and if we see this happening, we'll step in. You know, it, it's not everyone at Guam Memorial Hospital. Of course you know, not. That, no. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, of course it's not. Uh, we did have some uh, comments uh, here. Boy, did we ever. Uh, Tony comments in, that's the same as a pay raise. Elizabeth said, COVID ER nurses should have fair compensation for their services. Uh, Elizabeth comments, GMH needs better housekeeping. Patient services are horrible. My mom waited outside the ultrasound department after they were done, waited an hour until I asked someone passing by and said, when are they returning her to her room? She waited over an hour in the hallway. Ceiling had dust and cobwebs. She passed away. Every time oh. I look at the hospital, I get emotional. Fix the hospital. Pat oh, wow. Katz, uh, go off oh. island for medical while the people of Guam are at the mercy of the Guam Memorial Hospital. Rosemary comments, this is one transparency of the party party system that the administration is displaying. Another comment, not funny about the falling ceiling. Do something. Yeah. Uh, make it work and stop the political drama. Matt Shuck comments in, thank you for mentioning that, Chris. Unclassified employees as well get two or three pay grades up and then become classified because suddenly they qualify for the position. While other right. classified employees are told a position can't open for them because of no budget but there are vacancies, just a matter of speaking up about it. It's happening in small agencies, Chris. Okay, and we'll, we'll send our FOIAs, but, you know, um, well, that's what well, we're hearing is that, you know, they're getting their people in and they're making them permanent. Well, I mean, you know, it's an election. You know, I'm going to copy those uh, comments that are being made and, and mention that during the public hearing today. You know, it's important that these people who do reach out to you, Chris, you know, and um, and it does get to us that they should be heard. So um, I'll be, uh, I don't, I'll get my staff to do it because I really can't see any comments on the screen. So yeah. I don't know what's going on. I know on you're not it. the most Facebook savvy person, Senator. It's cool. I know. I, I do my best though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that I should never stand if you're not wearing pants, uh, you know, your full clothing. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's on Zoom. You know, those are the things I'm real the cautious basics, about. basics, right, yeah. That pretty much extends not just Facebook, but in life yeah, in general. Yeah, that's a good one to live uh, by. Right on. <laughs> well, I think we're on Facebook right now, you yeah. know. That's, but yeah, this is Zoom. But um, no, I really appreciate those, those people speaking out. Uh, I do. It's always, sometimes it's very quiet out there. And um, it allows the senators to get away with certain things that they've been trying to push their own agenda that's obviously self-serving. And, uh, and believe it or not, you know, that when gentleman said stop the politics, well, that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to stop this type of politics and we can't do it without, you know, just um, our individual self. We need to hear from the public. I mean, we work for the public. We don't work for ourselves, we work for them. And it's important that their voices are heard to show this is wrong. This is, this should not be done. We should follow what, what civil service and the Department of uh, Administration had put into play years ago you know, on merit systems. Um, we need to stop this hiring bar, uh, temporary employees just so that they can get the uh, needed uh, push to get these classified positions. It all should be based on merit. And this section that I mentioned earlier on page seven, you know, from A and then or B, which is just wipes out all that um, education, college, bachelor's degree, wipes out three years of specialized experience in that particular field. It, it wipes it all out. That needs to be eliminated. I think, too, when you look at the doc center, and I'm going to let you go because I know that you're still looking at them. Um, they'll have, like, there was one I saw where it said uh, outstanding uh, qualifications or EQ, is it ex excellent qualifications? And the individual had a bachelor's degree. Which, I mean, you know, that's not bad. I Hey, go to college, get your learn on. But, you know, I mean, when you compare it with some of the other outstanding qualifications, it doesn't really pass muster. But I got to let you go because I know you got a whole Bible of uh, GMH hiring docs to go through. Oh, my God. 340 pages <laughs> to look through and, and try. And, and I'm sure the speaker has the same thing as well. But I encourage the people of Guam to, again, your listening audience and those that you might know, to please tune in if you can. If you can't, then... Um, it's on YouTube. Watch these videos. Stay tuned. You know, Chris, during the um, COVID, when everyone was locked down, we were still having session. And um, it, it was great because a lot of people started tuning in and getting to know what the legislature is really doing and who's really there and working. Um, and now that, you know, things are starting to get a little bit back to normal or we're adjusting to learn to live with this, this uh, variant, um, that they're veering away from you know, what's happening in your community, what creates laws in your community. And I'm, I'm hoping that everyone stay the course and um, stay with us and, and watch this, watch our hearings and watch session. So you can really see what's going on. And next year is election year. So you can take an educated, um, well, not an educated, well, an educated guess, but you know, an educated vote on who should be there in the in the legislature to for the best interest of them yeah go register and vote guys none of this complaining 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 and then absolutely okay thank, thank you senator you. hey everybody merry christmas oh. to you hey <laughs> uh, wait I, I i just wanted to ask you i've always wanted to ask you senator sure. you, you you've got such a such a long and story career as a as a musical performer right what is your favorite christmas song to do like not not necessarily the one that's requested the most of you and everything like that but what is your favorite to do either because it's a challenge you know with your vocal range or just like it, it elicits the best response from the crowd like i you know i have so many favorites you know and i i've been listening non-stop to christmas music you know um i love listening to uh, baby faces christmas album mm -hmm. Um, okay. and listening, I, so I always put that one on, uh, or Brian McKnight's, um, talk Whitney about range. Christmas, <laughs> oh, beautiful. But I guess the most favorite that really touches everyone's heart is, uh, um, you know, the have yourself a Merry Christmas and chestnuts. Those two are like the killer songs where you can really wail, you know, mm -hmm. put some gospel into that and wow. just, you know, lift your hand in the air. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Have yourself a merry little Christmas. You can jam it. You know? There you go. So, those two. So have yourself a merry Christmas and uh, chestnuts. Now, and and by the end of by the end of the gig, the tip jar is pretty much full after you built that one out. <laughs> oh, I I don't know, but I I'm I definitely my heart is full after singing that song. Yeah. You know, that's on my really bucket list, uh, Senator. I want to barbecue chestnuts. 
Barbecue Jazz Night, baby. Let's yeah. do it. Then you roast know? it on the open fire. That's barbecue, right? <laughs> hey, what we have to do to make it tomorrow, we have to marinate it. That's it. First. That's <laughs> it. Soy <laughs> sauce, vinegar, <laughs> black pepper, onion. Got it. Hey, maybe we can do that. Marinate chestnuts, the Chamorro style, you know, or it's in, uh, Canadian style marination and uh, <laughs> roast it and see what happens. And if it's good, we can box it. I mean, These chestnuts uh, have been sitting in beer for the last 40 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator. We got to run. Guys be safe. You and, too. Uh, by the way, the difference between, uh, you know, Secret Santa and White Elephant, you guys, <laughs> you guys were making me laugh. It's typical of the men trying to figure out. Of you course. Know, okay. You guys are last minute shoppers. Yeah. But Secret Santa is one that uh, everybody puts your name in, in a, um, a bucket and then you pull a name and uh, whoever that name is you have to buy a gift but you don't tell them who it's from you just put their name on it by the gift that's secret santa white elephant everybody brings a gift to the party and then uh it's on display then someone pulls the name of that individual they come up and they grab whatever they want but i always put a twist to it um actually it was a twist when i went to a, a christmas party once and what they did was they picked a, picked a number, they went to the gift that had that number on it, they took it, and then if they wanted somebody else's gift, they had to bring that person on and junk and pull to win that person's gift. Oh. Yeah, so you always know that that one real, you know, money envelope of fifty dollars. <laughs> everybody would be junk and pull. Okay, I want to challenge that person for that fifty dollars yeah. for this, uh, you know, Tupperware. <laughs> you know? I'm still bitter about the white. Of, I was in a white elephant last year, and there was I should have picked. I, so if I'm in one this year, I got my strategy down. <laughs> thank, thank you, Senator. We got to run. Uh, it's eight oh one. Tuesday, December 14, 2021, on the breeze. We're KUAM FM and Agatha Guam. KUAM TV, here we come. Good morning. Good. 